Well, good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It's no surprise that this would happen. It's just unfortunate that this is how this weekend's gonna go. This morning on GMSA, we're less than 24 hours away from Christmas morning, but stormy conditions are threatening to derail people's holiday plans with travel headaches across the country. Back here at home, a family is safe, but staying with relatives after a fire torches their house. Why it wasn't the only one crews had to put out in the last 12 hours. And taking a look outside, San Antonio looking beautiful, but it is cold. It is very cold. We're going to be looking at weather with Sarah. Good morning. Good morning. Happy or Merry Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve. Feliz Noche Buena at 6 o'clock, Saturday, December 24th. Happy to be here, Sarah. I cannot believe Christmas Eve is finally here. Already. What a rush. And it really does feel like Christmas Eve. Oh I don't know. I grew up here in South Texas. Same. I've, I, don't, I think the only time it's ever felt that I can remember this cold was when it snowed down in Corpus Christi back in, like, what was that? 2004. 2000? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The honestly Christmas miracle of 2004. <laughs> so we are actually much colder than average outside right now. Another hard freeze around San Antonio. It's 20 degrees in San Antonio, 19 in Holotus, 18 in Bernie, 11 in Comfort, 13 in Kerrville, 18 in New Braunfels, 20 at Port S.A. and 18 in Hondo. So a couple of degrees warmer than yesterday morning, but definitely still cold out there. Here's the thing, though. Today we are expecting to rise above freezing. By the afternoon, we'll be in the low 40s in San Antonio. There's been parts of the hill country that have been below freezing since Thursday afternoon. But today, all of us will be able to see the temperatures rise above freezing, 41 degrees. Then early tomorrow morning, another hard freeze. So don't forget to drip your faucets again overnight into tomorrow and keep those plants covered because we do anticipate another hard freeze Christmas morning. But look at that little warmer temperatures near 50 degrees. Still a cool Christmas all in all. Speaking of Christmas, it's that time of year where we get to track Santa Claus. Santa has officially left the North Pole and he is heading south right now as we speak. Leaving the North Pole, we'll be tracking Santa Claus over the day today, both me and me. Montgomery and we'll be taking a look at your forecast as we head into next week. Also travel across Texas. What does that look like? I'll have those details if you're planning on hitting the road in the next couple of days. Jonathan. Thank you, Sarah. Well, San Antonio firefighters had their hands full overnight with fires across the city and a space heater is being blamed for a fire along Metal Trial Drive. It happened around 1115 last night at the home of a family of five. Fire crews say the flames quickly spread through a bedroom. Two children and three adults made it out safely. Firefighters contained the blaze to the bedroom, but there's significant damage. Now, the family did have a place to stay overnight. And we have new details this morning on another destructive fire. A family lost their belongings and their home after a blaze on the 1300 block of Riva Street. This happened around 720 Friday night when crews arrived they received a report of two people trapped inside of the home, which was fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters knocked out the fire in minutes and everyone who lived there made it out safely with no injuries. The home is a total loss and the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Well, over in Bandera country, people are hoping the heat stays on after rolling outages early Friday morning. An equipment failure at the Medina Lake substation caused outages to about 1,400 homes from Medina Lake up through parts of Bandera and Kendall County. When the co-op co tried moving those customers over to a different substation, it overloaded the system. They didn't fail. They did what they're supposed to do by, you know, having protective settings in place. And then we did have to rotate outages to be able to rebalance and reset that equipment. It took the co-op about 12 hours to restore power. To your morning headlines, we're seeing that the effects of what's being called a once in a generation storm. Hundreds of millions of Americans are under weather alerts this morning. 
with the cold conditions churning deadly in places like Ohio. Also across the country, over 5,000 flights canceled just before Christmas. For many passengers, no relief in sight. Airlines are booked out for days, meaning rebooking could take several more days at a time while families are trying to come together this weekend. Over on Capitol Hill, President Biden has signed the $858 billion spending bill, which would give service members a pay raise and allow more funding for Ukraine. The bill also ends the U.S. military's COVID vaccine mandate. The Senate and the House passed the act with bipartisan support. It authorizes $817 billion for the Defense Department, which is $84 billion more from President Biden's budget request earlier this year. The increase for 2023 is intended to address inflation. Anyone getting paid for their goods and services through apps like Venmo or Etsy just got a break from the IRS. The agency is delaying a rule change that would have resulted in tax forms going out by January 31st. 2023. So to anyone using such apps for their business transactions, the IRS has postponed it by a year. The rule would apply for payments over $600. All right, it's 606 and 20 degrees outside. Oh, it's so cold, but still ahead in this half hour of GMSA, we're talking tacos, deliciosos tacos with David Elder. He's checking out a food truck with unique ingredients on Texas Eats. A close game for the Spurs ends in another loss on the road. We'll look at what caused the silver and black to fall behind against the Orlando Magic. And we're 20 degrees San Antonio. Let's see if it's going to warm up later today, even just a little bit. We're going to be checking in with Sarah Spiden. Hi, I'm Alexis Page, one of the producers here at KSAT. My holiday tradition every year, most of my family lives away, so I do do a gift exchange with my close friends that live here in San Antonio. It's really nice, we get together, we open up the packages, we talk about why we gave each other the gifts. And then usually from there, we're dressed up in our pajamas, and if we have the day off, we hang out and watch Christmas movies. If not, I will wear my pajamas to work. <laughs> Feliz Navidad! The San Antonio Spurs were back in action last night, hoping to grab a win before Christmas. Keldon Johnson was back in the lineup as the Spurs faced the Magic in Orlando to wrap up a three-game road trip. Now, the Magic led 34-28 to after one, but the Spurs battled back to tie the game at 61 at the half. The Magic led 94-89 to after three and rolled over the Spurs in the fourth quarter. They outscored San Antonio 39-24 in the final 12 minutes to win 133-113. to The Spurs have lost four of their last five games. I'm getting open threes and they weren't missing those tonight. I think they shot over 30 percent, or I mean over 50 percent from three. Um, you know, it never helps, but you know, we're giving them wide open looks and so definitely made it a lot easier for them. So looking ahead, the Spurs have two days off to enjoy Christmas before getting back to work Monday night against the Utah Jazz. Tip-off is at 7 at the AT&T Center. And don't forget, Spurs fans, Thursday night is Star Wars night against oh, cool. the New York Knicks. <laughs> That'll be awesome. <laughs> hey, guys, a Merry Christmas Eve to you all. You too, uh, Sarah. Now, this weather is perfect for Santa, but not great for us when it comes to our plants in our pipes outside, but we haven't had too many issues out there uh, as far as power outages and uh, and freezing pipes go. So that's good news. Although there are some uh, areas Saws is reporting about a thousand customers with freezing pipes, but that's out of about half a million. So not too bad, not too bad out there. Outside right now it is 20 degrees out there and winds are from the north at five miles per hour. So it feels like it's 13. Now, I will say, though, that those winds have calmed down quite a bit from where they were yesterday, and we expect a wind from the northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour today. Elsewhere, it's 14 in Rock Springs, 23 in Del Rio, 22 in Pleasanton, 20 in Gonzales, 18 in New Braunfels, and 20 here in San Antonio. Look across the state of Texas. Deep freeze has settled in over Texas for another night. It's 23 in El Paso, 16 in Midland, 
15 in Lubbock, 22 in Dallas, and 19 in Austin. If you're planning on traveling across the state of Texas today, know that the weather is just going to be perfectly fine. There have been a few flurries reported just south of Dallas, but barely making it to the ground, not causing any issues on the roadways. We're expecting uh, mostly sunny skies across the state of Texas today, so no major travel issues. And on top of that, everybody across the state of Texas should get above freezing this afternoon. This is a look at forecast highs. We should be seeing temperatures above freezing all across the state of Texas today, including here in San Antonio. So let's take you through the 12 hour forecast. Again, very cold. If you have early morning plans outside, make sure to bundle up. We will have a bit of a wind chill out there, just not as bad as yesterday. Yesterday around noon, that's when we'll be above freezing in San Antonio. So we'll see temperatures above freezing uh, even in the hill country as early as 1 2 p.m. And parts of the hill country have seen below freezing temperatures for about 36 hours right now. And this afternoon we'll be topping off right near 41. So a chilly day all in all, but warmer than yesterday. And we will be looking at temperatures above freezing this afternoon. In Kerrville, it'll be 41 degrees, 41 in Canyon Lake, 44. Uh, pardon me, 44. 41 in Del Rio, 41 in Eagle Pass, 41 in Laredo, 41 in Gonzales, and 41 in Canyon Lake. But do not let your guard down yet because overnight tonight into Christmas morning, we expect another hard freeze. So keep those pipes insulated, keep those plants covered. It'll be 20 in Canyon Lake, 22 Christmas morning in Hondo. In Kerrville, it'll be 19, 21 in Rock Springs, 24 in Catula. And let's get a neighborhood view here. It'll be 22 in Seguin, 23 in New Braunfels, 23 in Divine, 20 in Utopia, 19 in Bandera, and 19 in Kerrville. However, if we get down to 22 degrees tomorrow morning, that will be the coldest, the second coldest Christmas morning on record for San Antonio, and records date back to 1885. But that's just the morning hours because we do anticipate temperatures warming up really nicely after that hard freeze in the morning. Sunrise for any sunrise services right at about 726 in the morning. By noon will be in 44 and tomorrow afternoon 50 for the high on Christmas Day. Still enough for that ugly Christmas sweater to come into use. But again, the warmest day we've had for a little while here in San Antonio. So as we look ahead, Notice we're going to be back in the 70s by Wednesday here in San Antonio. So yeah, it's one of the reasons why I love being a meteorologist in Texas. You get to see big temperature swings all across the board. By the way, Monday morning, I think we could see another freeze, just not as intense as the last couple of mornings have been. Okay. You got to love living in Texas. You get all seasons in just a matter of a week. It's true. Coming up too, we're going to talk about travel across the nation. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, still to come, if you didn't know, you now know that you can sue Hollywood for a misleading movie trailer. We'll explain what this is all about in your morning spotlight. And after the break, David Elder has a Christmas giveaway. You don't want to miss this. Plus, he visits a food truck that's getting great reviews. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, two, three, Fireball nine, daily four, one, eight, five, zero, Fireball seven. Cash five, those numbers are two, four, 13, 14, 28. And there it is, Mega Millions, 15, 21, 32, <laughs> 38, 62, Mega Ball eight, Mega Plier four, good luck. Holiday traditions at the Sears household. We decorate for Christmas inside and outside, but we don't start till the day after Thanksgiving. Inside, we always have a nativity scene set up somewhere. And our Christmas morning is when we open up the packages and enjoy our time together. These days, usually just me and my wife for a good part of the day. And then we have a ham for our Christmas lunch. And I wanna wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Looking ahead, David Elder is giving away a PlayStation 5 console during Texas Eats this morning at 10 a.m. Plus, he's checking out a food truck with some unique ingredients. Take a look.
basically what we have here is we have a squash blossom. I stuff them with a mixture of cream cheese, Monterey Jack, and sour cream, and uh, poblanos. I fry them in a nice, light tempura batter. I set them on top of avocado salsa, and I hit them with a little bit of uh, pickled cabbage for acidity to cut through all that richness. So it's kind of like your play on like a chili relleno. Basically. Right. Well, here, you grab one here. All right. And plus, we also make tortillas out of our uh, heirloom corn that we import from Oaxaca as well. And this is where it's at. Cheers to you. Cheers. Thank That's you. That's the bite. Oh, bro, give me some elbow. Mm. Woo! Look at the inside of that. I've never had squash blossom. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about squash blossom. I didn't know you can eat it. I didn't know. Yeah. Gotta watch uh, Tech Eats today. Yeah, I sure do. And win that PlayStation 5 console. Let's see if I get lucky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, time is 621. Temperature is a nice cold 20 degrees. All right, after the break, it's a story you've probably seen all over Twitter. Rapper Tori Lenenz and a shooting involving music star Megan Thee Stallion. The trial and the verdict is next in your morning spotlight. In your morning spotlight, a jury in L.A. found rapper and singer Tory Lanez guilty of the 2020 shooting of fellow rapper Megan Thee Stallion. He now faces up to 22 years in prison and possible deportation back to his native Canada. Lanez had pled not guilty to three charges, including assault with a semi-automatic firearm. Megan accused Lanez of shooting her in the foot following an argument. He did not take the stand in his defense during the nine-day trial. A California judge says movie studios can now be sued for misleading movie trailers. Listen to this. The judge ruled this week to allow parts of a lawsuit against Universal Pictures to move forward. Two fans of actress Ana de Armas sued Universal for false advertising over its trailer for the 2019 film yesterday. They say the, they rented the movie after seeing de Armas in the trailer, but her scene was cut from the final film. I don't remember that. I remember uh, watching that movie. I don't remember the film. I'm familiar with Ana de Armas, Blonde, mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. But um, goodness, I didn't know you can sue for that. I don't know. Now you know. Let's 625 see. and 20 <laughs> degrees outside. That's right. And still ahead at 630 as this week's wild winter storm moves across North America. We'll check on how it's impacting holiday travel. Plus, it might be surprising, but the holidays are not everyone's favorite time of the year. For many, winter can come with seasonal depression or trouble with family members. How you can survive the holidays in our next half hour. Good morning. It's 6.30. It is December 24th. Happy Christmas Eve. Happy Christmas Eve. Feliz Noche Buena. We've made it to Christmas Eve. Let's check in with Sarah Spivey for the forecast. But Sarah, are you, you're tracking someone very important. I am. All morning long, all day long, meteorologist Mia Montgomery and I are going to be tracking Santa. So make sure your kids tune in too. Here's where Santa is right now. He's just moved through South Korea. He's already delivered 41 million presents. And guys, he just left the North Pole like an hour ago. So so he is booking it. Uh, so expected to arrive here after the kids go to bed. All right, here's a look at temperatures outside right now. Very cold across South Central Texas and San Antonio is at 20 degrees right now. Our second morning in a row with a hard freeze. 18 in Bernie, 16 in Rio Medina, 18 in Hondo, 18 in New Braunfels, 18 in Seguin, 24 in Stinson, and 17 in Yavaldi. Now, briefly yesterday, we did get above freezing in San Antonio. But today, all of us will be getting above freezing by around lunch. It'll be 26 at 10, 34 at noon. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and a high temperature today of 41. Who knew 41 could feel so good, right? Total sunshine, chilly weather for us though today as well. Now, here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast coming up. I'm going to show you high temperatures around South Central Texas in the hill country. You know, it's been below freezing for up to about 36 to 40 hours so far. We're going to talk about Christmas. Don't stop your uh, hard freeze preps just yet because we do expect another morning hard freeze tomorrow on Christmas morning, but it will be sunny and near 50. And this week, believe it or not, will be near 70 degrees by Wednesday. I've got those details coming up. Sarah, Jonathan. 
Thank you, Sarah. Well, this morning, San Antonio Water System says so far the city's infrastructure is holding up to the freezing temps we've had this week. But the city also says it got over a thousand calls from customers Friday saying their pipes froze. As you heard from Sarah Spivey, we have to get through next week uh, in the days to come for things to warm up. Saws wants to remind everyone, if you haven't already, to keep water moving in your pipes. At least one faucet inside your house or apartment needs to have a slow drip going. And if you have pipes on an outside wall that are hidden inside a cabinet, open the cabinets to let warm air circulate around the pipes and make sure you wrap outside pipes and turn off your sprinkler system. And if you lose power or need a place to escape the cold weather, there are seven warming centers open across the city and county. So if you need transportation, VIA is offering free rides to anyone. So just remember to bring your own medication, clothes and supplies. The city of Bernie also has a warming center that will be open until Monday. It's at the Patrick Health Public Library. We have all this information on our website, ksat.com. Well, CPS Energy is offering customers some suggestions to keep their next bill down. For those who can, keep the thermostat at 68 degrees, but don't turn off the heat so your pipes won't freeze. If you have ceiling fans, make sure the blades are going in a clockwise pattern to push heat down into the room. And for those of you who have an electric vehicle, charge them during the day to avoid the high demand overnight. And this morning, over 205 million Americans are feeling the wrath of winter as rain, snow and freezing temperatures sweep across the country. The not so jolly weather putting a damper on travel plans this Christmas Eve, both in the air and on the ground. ABC's Derek Dennis joins us with the latest. Powerful snow, winds, flooding and brutally cold temperatures seen across the country, creating one of the coldest Christmases in decades. I'm standing where there was coastal flooding earlier this morning. Now it's a myriad of frozen puddles of seawater. And now about 28 states have seen the temperatures dip below the zero degree Fahrenheit mark. More than one and a half million customers across 23 states lost power. It just stings the eyes. You feel like you immediately have icicles on your eyelashes. For those traveling for the holidays, the weather has made it nearly impossible and very dangerous. A nearly 50 car pileup on the Ohio Turnpike killed at least four people. People. In western New York, several feet of snow is expected. Highways like this one already shut down for 150 miles. The governor declared a state of emergency. The slippery conditions making air travel tough, too. 5,000 flights canceled on Friday. We keep getting updates every 20 minutes that it's delayed, delayed, delayed. The runways in Seattle were shut down. We got onto the plane and we were getting ready to go and then they were like, no, this canceled too much ice. With airlines selling nearly all their seats, rebooking could take days. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. Oh my gosh, if you're traveling today, I'm heading home to Corpus, but that's a short drive and thankfully uh, our roads are good. That is the good news. It's, it's cold outside, but the roads aren't freezing. So I'll be hitting the road too, about a three hour drive down south to the valley. So I'm happy to see that, you know, although it's 20 degrees outside, it is clear skies. I know, my, so my in-laws are coming on Christmas day and they keep texting me. They're like, how's, how's the weather there? Do you guys have powers? Like everyone calm down. It's, we're good. We're good. We're good. We we're got good. This. We're gonna There's a little bit of cold temperature and I was uh, letting Sarah warm. and Justin know that I love the winter. I love the fall, especially when it's cold outside, but it's like sunny skies. You got to love it. You got to love that. Bundle up though. All right. It is 634 and 20 degrees outside. And still ahead on GMSA, nasty weather across the country is giving millions of people the gift of rough conditions for holiday travel. And that was before a 50 car pile up overnight in Ohio. And after the break, the holidays are not always everyone's favorite time of year. For many, winter can come with seasonal depression or trouble with family members. How you can survive it, that's coming up. And taking a look outside, San Antonio twinkling brightly just in time for Christmas. Will it warm up even just a little? We'll be checking in with Sarah Spivey. My name is MJ Einotch, and a tradition that me and my family do is that we hide a pickle in the Christmas tree, like a pickle ornament, which I thought only we did until like last year, and then I found out it's a German thing, but we're not German, so I think we just have fun with it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Azian Vermeer, and my favorite holiday tradition is 
We like to watch Home Alone 1 and 2 every Christmas with my girls and now my son. Merry Christmas to everybody, everyone out there in these nutcrackers. If you feel the holidays are more of a household than a Hallmark movie, then you're not alone. Oh my gosh, Sarah Spivey and I were just talking <laughs> about the stress of the holidays this morning. So according to a recent poll, at least 75% of Americans admit they need to escape family this time of the year, but there are ways to make the most of the season. That's right, and Nancy Alvarez has the holiday survival guide that will even make Clark Griswold start dashing through the snow. No, no, we're all in this together. This is a full-blown four-alarm holiday emergency here. Do you associate the holidays with good memories or troubling times? My stepdad's kind of annoying. The best part is spending time with my mom, and the worst part is having my mom tell me what to do. And the worst part is probably we don't like to do it, but we talk politics. On average, Americans will stay with family for three and a half days. Nearly 40% say finding sleeping arrangements is one of the most stressful parts of preparing for out-of-town family. Other top concerns, lack of privacy, family getting on your nerves, and drama between family members. Most of us want harmony in our families. One of the most important sanity savers, plan early. Who's traveling? What are the sleeping arrangements? Set realistic expectations. When you adjust your mindset to something that's realistic, you're already ahead of the game. Keep healthy boundaries. It's important to find a balance between being generous and hospitable. Most importantly, keep the lines of communication oh, open with your significant so other about how you are feeling. If you're feeling that you're not accepted, I would say the first thing to talk to your mate about that. Taking the time to make a survival strategy will help your sanity, peace, and joy this holiday season. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Experts also say order all the holiday sides and trimmings and not, and ju and not just focus on turkey or ham. That way you spend less time in the kitchen and more time enjoying the season. Thank you, Sarah. I'm still taking note, making sure that I prepare correctly for Christmas. <laughs> well, before we go to the weathers, uh, some quick travel news. As of millions of people hit the roads today for Christmas, at least four people were killed in a series of weather-related crashes along the Ohio Turnpike. It happened in Sandusky County between Toledo and Cleveland. Multiple injuries were also reported in the 50-vehicle pileup. Heavy winds and snow are at least partly to blame. Officials are using buses to take stranded travelers to shelters. Well, video there. Meanwhile, check this out. The cold temps and high winds sweeping across the lower 48 have not spread have not spared Alaska Anchorage International Airport registered wind gusts of 68 miles per hour on Friday. The winds were clocked at even higher numbers elsewhere. However, winds are expected to die down today for Christmas Eve. Sarah Spivey, I was out when uh, that cold front was coming in. I was covering my pipes and bringing in my plants as fast as I could. And I was watering Sarah to try to like get the ground nice and warm. And I was like, come on, I got to water before the freeze hits. <laughs> I think it was like already 32. A little too late. And yeah. I could see some like crystallize oh my goodness <laughs> Some Sarah. Ice forming and I was like oh, oh gotta happen but that, yeah you know what we got Sarah we're we deal with this kind of cold every now and then but I think with the recent memory of February 2021 right. it definitely put a lot of people on edge across the state of Texas but here's the thing even though it's cold even though it's well below freezing Texas travel should be just fine today on the roadways, other than the usual traffic that you see at this time of year. Although it is very cold out there right now, it's 18 in New Braunfels, 15 in Kerrville, 18 in Hondo, Del Rio, you're at 23 degrees, even Corpus Christi at 27 this morning. It's 20 here in San Antonio, and as we zoom into a neighborhood view here, 16 around Medina Lake, 16 in Bulverde, 18 uh, in Seguin, 18 in Converse, and 24 at Stinson. So a second morning in a row with a hard freeze. Some of us around San Antonio were able to rise above freezing, but generally north of 1604, it stayed below freezing yesterday. But all of us will be able to see temperatures rise above freezing today. Winds are a lot calmer than they were yesterday. We're seeing a wind from the north at about five miles per hour. That is bringing a small wind chill, but not those single digits uh, wind chills that we were seeing yesterday. Here's something that's going to affect you again today. How 
dry it is out there. Dew points are in the single digits. That's below our scale right here. Not only are you going to need a little extra chapstick today, watch out for some static shock. You know, today with that dry air in place, static shock is going to occur pretty frequently out there. So just be aware for that. Uh, as for the forecast for the day today, quickly warming, even though it's going to stay chilly. By 10, we'll be at 26 degrees. By noon, we'll be above freezing here in San Antonio at 34 degrees. And in the afternoon, right around 41 for the high temperature. But don't let your guard down just yet because we will see another hard freeze overnight into Christmas morning. Uh, although many of us are going to be able to see temperatures rise above 32 uh, during the afternoon today. It'll be 41 in Kerrville where it hasn't been above freezing since Thursday night. 41 in Canyon Lake, 41 in Del Rio, 41 in Catula, 41 in Pleasanton, and near 40 degrees around San Antonio. 41 in New Braunfels and Seguin. It'll be 41 in Castroville. 41 is the number on the map there for sure. Now early tomorrow morning, again, we do anticipate another hard freeze. So please make sure to uh, keep those pipes insulated and keep those plants covered. It'll be 19 in Kerrville, 20 in Canyon Lake, 22 in Hondo, 23 in Del Rio, 22 in Gonzales, and around San Antonio will be 22 in Castroville, 23 in New Braunfels, and 19 in Bulverde and Bernie. So keep those pipes insulated, keep those plants covered. However, just like today, tomorrow, we're going to be seeing temperatures quickly rise. For any sunrise services, it'll be, sunrise is going to occur at about 726. We'll start off very cold, but even by noon, we'll already be in the 40s, 50 degrees at in the afternoon for the high temperature. So feeling like Christmas outside all day long with northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, let's talk about Texas travel. As I mentioned, we do not anticipate any problems on the roads today. You may see some of that snow that's been being indicated there on the radar just south of Dallas. Those are actually snow flurries, very light. Nothing is really causing any issues on the road, so you don't need to worry about that if you're heading up 35 toward Dallas. And again, across the state of Texas today, really sunny skies. However, that's not the case across the nation. We've got two systems working across the northern tier of the United States, one that's over the northern Rockies, and another one that's over the Great Lakes. So as we look at travel trouble spots across the nation, here's where some areas could be affected. Today, it's mainly going to be around the Great Lakes, all right? So areas near Detroit, Cleveland, Toronto, all of those areas are going to have some snow, very cold temperatures too. So make sure to check on your flights uh, because again, in the northeastern tier of the United States, there could be some issues. Tomorrow, Christmas Day on Sunday, most of those issues will be across northern tier of the United States. So not a terribly uh, horrible travel day on Sunday, but not many people are traveling on Christmas itself. And then as we head into Monday across the great uh, across the central plains in the Midwest, that's where we expect many of the travel problems to be across the Midwest on Monday. But if you're planning on traveling across Texas on the road the day after Christmas, you will not have to worry about any kind of hiccups on the road. In fact, temperatures across Texas will be well above freezing by Monday afternoon, so no issues there uh, in Texas. Just if you're flying, check with your airline. Otherwise, here's a look at your seven day forecast. Again, I want to remind you another hard freeze early tomorrow morning, 50 degrees Christmas day and then a freeze on Monday morning as well, although temperatures will not be as frigid as they have been. And I think we could have a light freeze on Tuesday as well. But notice those high temperatures slowly going up. By Wednesday, we're going to be in the 70s, and all this cold will be a distant memory until we get our next strong Arctic front move. So we have good travel here in South Texas. Santa, though, I mean, is dealing with all kinds of stuff, but he's got magic, right? He's got magic. <laughs> okay. And we're continuing to track Santa all morning long. And by the way, he knows what it's like. What is this cold outside? And he knows yeah. what he's doing. He's got this. He's got it all <laughs> under control. No worries. <laughs> 648, 19 degrees. That's right. And coming up on GMSA, if you're stuck on the side of the road and need help, don't panic. You're not alone. How you can get free roadside assistance in case of an emergency. Speaking of travel, we're going to take a look outside with Transky on the roads. Again, safe travels out there on the roads. No precipitation out there. It's just very cold, so make sure you check your tire pressure. I did this morning. Good. Might have to put some more on, uh, more air in those tires before I hit the road to Corpus later today. If any issue pops up, we will let you know about them. We'll be right back. First, we're going to take a look at our lotto numbers, though. Yeah, we have some lucky, we might have some lucky winners out there. We have picked three. Those lucky numbers are two, two, three, and nine. 
Texas Lottery Daily Four, those numbers are 18507. Did you see where the uh, dental hygienist, she like in the office party, she got a scratch off ticket and won $175,000. Wow. Oh my gosh, I want that in my stock. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> All right, catch five, two, four, 13, 14, 28. Let's look at Mega Millions. 15, 21, 32, 38, 62, Mega Ball 8, Mega Player 4. Good luck. My name is Stefania Jimenez. I'm an anchor here at KSAT News. And one of my favorite holiday traditions is done Boricua style, baby. So what my family and I do is we make pasteles, which is our version, the Puerto Rican version of tamales. Those are actually done weeks before. And we also make bednil, which is pork shoulder and arroz con andules. And the whole house smells like it. And I swear, whenever I smell that, it smells like Christmas to me. So that's basically our Christmas tradition. Us, all in the kitchen, cooking, dancing, laughing, very loud music. And that's just how we do Christmas at my house. We just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season, and of course, Feliz Navidad. This morning with the cold we're getting, the last thing you want to deal with is car trouble. So before hitting the road, here's a winter checklist you'll want to go over. So the owner of O'Brien's Automotive says make sure your battery's good. You can have your battery checked to see if it's able to handle the cold and also use a good antifreeze. Experts say never put water in the system and use wiper fluid that's designed to not freeze. And when you get in your car, don't just take off. Let your vehicle warm up. It is important to let your, run, your vehicle run about a minute and a half in the very cold weather because you do need everything to warm up and you need all those fluids to start running properly in the vehicle. Also keep an eye on your tire pressure. Make sure they're properly inflated. She says you can have your tires checked if your warning light comes on. And if you're on the road and you have car trouble, there's free help available. The HERO program is offering drivers roadside assistance. HERO stands for Highway Emergency Response Operation. It's a free roadside assistance initiative from TxDOT. It can help you if you need gas, get your battery jumped, or if you get a flat tire. HERO covers two 139 miles of highway within the greater San Antonio area. The number to call 210-732-4376. If you have your phone out, snap that, you know, that bottom lower thirds, you see that number there, snap it, keep it on your phone and keep it saved if you're going to be traveling over the next couple of days. Yeah, definitely save that number. And you know what another good tip is to carry a blanket in your trunk and maybe yeah. some water, uh, especially with these extreme conditions, you want to be able to keep warm in an event or in a case of an emergency. Good idea. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, 655 and 19 degrees outside. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Looking ahead today in the NFL, the Cowboys and Texans both have a pair of rivalry games on Christmas Eve with tons of playoff implications on the line. All right, let's go Cowboys. Starting with Dallas, the Cowboys will welcome their bitter rival, the Philadelphia Eagles, to town. Philly has the best record in the league right now with just one loss, while Dallas is coming off a stunning loss at the hands of Jacksonville Jaguars. That one really hurt. If the Cowboys want to win the NFC East, they will will need to get through the Eagles. It's going to be a good one. Cowboys Eagles kick off this afternoon at 325 up in Arlington. Let's go Cowboys. Let's go. And meanwhile, the Houston Texans are not going to the playoffs. However, they have a great opportunity to play a uh, spoiler for their division rivals, the Tennessee Titans. While the Titans are currently the AFC South leaders, they have been struggling lately with four straight losses, and now the Jacksonville Jaguars are right on their tail for the division crown. Texans and Titans kick off today at noon in Nashville. Well, we knew it was going to get into the teens again this morning, and it sure has. 19 in San Antonio, 15 in Bilverde, 16 in Bandera, 13 in Comfort, but we will warm to above freezing today by lunch, 41 degrees this afternoon. Another hard freeze, though, tomorrow morning, so don't wrap up uh, those, uh, don't pack away the 
things that are covering the plants because it is going to be another freezing start tomorrow morning. 50 degrees tomorrow though for Christmas Day in the afternoon. Another freeze Monday morning and a light freeze Tuesday morning, but those high temperatures will be back in the 70s by the middle of the week. Where Santa last Santa's check. in Eastern Russia right now. Wow. 650 okay. million presents delivered. Okay, Sarah is going to be tracking Santa throughout the rest of the morning. See you guys back at 8 a.m. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A driver discovered human remains in a wooded area near Loop 1604. What the Bear County Sheriff is saying about the bones that were found. And with the freezing temperatures we've been dealing with, we've been saying how important it is to let the faucets drip and to cover those outside pipes. But what about your car? Some advice on how to prepare your car for this winter weather. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm saying it. 19 degrees at 8 this morning on Christmas Eve in San Antonio. Sarah Spivey will let us know how much longer these freezing temps will stick around for. Good morning, it's 8 o'clock on this Saturday morning. It's Christmas Eve and the temperature seems to only take a plummet, at least for now. Merry Christmas Eve. Are you going anywhere for Christmas? Yes, I'm going down to the RGV, so about a three hour drive. So I'm happy to hear that. I think uh, road conditions are going to be safe and ready to go. Yes, I'm, act I'm heading uh, down to Corpus Christi after the show. And Sarah, the good news here is, is that we're safe travel wise here in South, Te South Texas. Yeah, and across Texas too, wherever you have to go or on the roads around Texas, you're going to be just fine. It is going to be cold, however, but we are seeing plenty of sunshine across the Lone Star State. Take a look at these lows this morning. Temperatures currently at 15 degrees in Bilverde. It's 18 in Bernie, 19 in Holotus, 20 in New Braunfels, 15 in Kerrville, our second hard freeze in a row this morning here in San Antonio. But it's not all bad news because we're expecting to see temperatures get above freezing today. We'll be near 41. However, another hard freeze is likely tomorrow morning, 22 degrees early for Christmas morning before we warm up to near 50 for the high temperature for your Christmas day. Thank goodness we have all of that sunshine. I'll be back to talk more about uh, when we'll finally see a quick warm up here in San Antonio. But first, I wanted to track Santa. We've been doing this all morning long. Santa's last been seen in Iwo, Iwo Jima, Japan. So far, he's delivered nearly a billion presents. Way to go, Santa. You're doing the hard work for all of us. <laughs> it's going to be gold here tonight as Santa moves through San Antonio. Again, we'll talk about when we'll see a warm up coming up in just a bit. And San Antonio firefighters had their hands full overnight with fires across the city. And a space heater is being blamed for a fire along Meadow Trial Drive. It happened around 1115 last night at the home of a family of five fire crews say the flames quickly spread through a bedroom. Two children and three adults made it out safely. Firefighters contained the blaze to a bedroom, but there's significant damage. The family did have a place to stay overnight. And new details this morning on another destructive fire. A family lost their belongings and their home after a fire on the 1300 block of Riva Street. It happened Friday evening when crews arrived. They received a report of two people trapped inside of the home, which was fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters knocked out the fire in minutes and everyone who lived there made it out safely with no injuries. The home is a total loss and the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Now to a developing story, human remains found in a wooden, wooded area around a pro on a property off of Loop 1604 in Prue Road. It's not the right video we're showing you there, but according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, a human skull was discovered yesterday by a driver after that after cargo fell out of their vehicle. The driver went to go pick up, pick it up, and that's when they saw a skull. The Sheriff's Office hasn't found any other human remains in that area. Search, search crews and cadaver dogs are being used to find any other clues like jewelry or other human bones. Detectives told Sheriff Javier Salazar the skull looks like it's been exposed for a long time. For now, the remains are with the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. It looks like the skull has been sitting out here for a while. Um, you know, it is it is possible that the the person died right there and the, the bones were scattered elsewhere by animals or you know, heavy rains, maybe the, they kind of sunk into the ground. That's one of the things that we're looking for. Or it's possible that they died elsewhere and that skull may have been carried here by something like a coyote or a dog.
Sheriff Salazar says they will be comparing the teeth in that skull to the dental records of any missing people. And as we continue to deal with freezing temperatures, the San Antonio water system says it got more than a thousand calls from customers saying their pipes froze. Saws wants to remind everyone, if you haven't already, to keep water moving through your pipes. So that means leaving at least one faucet inside your home running with a slow drip. And if you have pipes on an outside wall that are hidden inside a cabinet, open the cabinets to let warm air circulate around the pipes. Lastly, make sure to wrap your outside pipes and turn off your sprinkler system. Another thing that many people are having to deal with as a result of the cold weather are rolling power outages. The community of Bandera dealt with an equipment failure yesterday morning at Medina Lake substation causing outages to about 1,400 homes from Medina Lake up through parts of Bandera and Kendall County. When the co-op tried moving those customers over to a different substation, it overloaded the system. They didn't fail. They did what they're supposed to do by, you know, having protective settings in place. And then we did have to rotate outages to be able to rebalance and reset that equipment. Well, it took the co-op about 12 hours to store power to those who are impacted. All right. Uh, time is 805. Temperatures 19 degrees. Jonathan, do you have a favorite holiday drink? I do. I love eggnog. Oh, well, still ahead, holiday drinks in a can. Which ones are worth spending your money on and what they taste like? I mean, now next, this weather brings us more than just frozen pipes. It can also have some negative effects on your cars. So we're going to be talking about some advice on what to do and what not to do when preparing for your car, making those preparations for this weather. Speaking of which, I just went outside and my tire pressure is low oh, that's, on yeah. my, so I need to fill that tire up before I head down to Corpus. But taking a look at live cam, 19 degrees at 8.06 this morning. That bird looked cold as it was flying by <laughs> the camera. Sure Sarah Spivey will have our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day forecast. We come back. Well, we won't need an ice scraper for this round of freezing temperatures. There are some things you should and should not do to make sure your car is prepared. Erica Hernandez shares tips on how to make sure your vehicles are winter safe. Battery, antifreeze, washer, fluid, tire pressure, all things to check during freezing temps. All equally important in different ways. First, you want to make sure your battery is good to go. Make sure the battery is a healthy battery. Um, if the battery is already weak in the cold weather, it's going to go out pretty quick. Nanette Newgart from O'Brien's Automotive says to make sure you have a good antifreeze and never put water in the system. Same goes for your wiper fluid. There's special washer fluid you can put in there that does not freeze as well. Now, if you notice the last few days, your tire pressure light may have gone on. It's important that you don't ignore that. They can uh, drop up to 20% of, of air. So that little light's going to go on inside, inside and you're going to get alerted, but you need to go get the tires checked. And finally, make sure you give your vehicle time to warm up before hitting the road. It is important to let your, run, your vehicle run about a minute and a half in the very cold weather because you do need everything to warm up and you need all those fluids to start running properly in the vehicle. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan Goto and I were just saying how we did everything wrong. We just took off this morning in a rush <laughs> to get to the station. Left, locked my front door, got into the car. I did, didn't warm it up. I just threw it in reverse. Didn't check our tire pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I wore those massive ski gloves. <laughs> A bit dramatic. And warmed up my car. Yeah, a little bit dramatic. I it's think. okay. I, I, the whole time I was like probably cursing under my breath. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. <laughs> I couldn't touch the steering wheel. It, the steering wheel was exceptionally cold. Yeah. Surprise it's been me. very cold this morning. Our second hard freeze in a row this morning. Yesterday we were seeing temperatures as low as 16 degrees in San Antonio. Today we've seen temperatures as low as 19. It's 20 degrees outside right now, but with those winds from the northwest at about five miles per hour, that's a lot less than the, than yesterday. It still feels like it's 12 degrees outside, so please bundle up. Give yourself a little bit of extra time to warm up that car before you head out. Uh, maybe you're traveling across the state of Texas today. I've got your travel forecast in just a bit. Right now, though, it's 17 in Yavaldi, 18 in Hondo, 15 in Kerrville, 20 in New Braunfels, 21 in Cat Tula and 15 in Fredericksburg. But as we take a look across the state of Texas, everybody's on ice. Everybody's on ice. It's 30 in Laredo, 14 in Lubbock, 10 in Amarillo, 21 in El Paso. Here's the good news, though. 
sunshine across the state of Texas. Yeah, you can see a little bit of uh, flurries south of uh, Dallas toward Waco, but those are barely making it to the ground and not causing any issues on the road. Otherwise, it is totally sunny no matter where you're going across the state of Texas. If you're hitting the roads, things are going to look great for you on the roadways. Now, in the air, things are a little bit different because of uh, national uh, snowstorms across parts of the north. So please check with your airline if you're heading to the airport. Otherwise, this afternoon, Texas is going to be on a thaw. Most of us will be seeing temperatures above freezing today. The only area where it could stay below freezing is extreme north Texas, but generally high temperatures expected to be above 32 degrees. And that goes for us here, too. So although it's very cold outside right now, we'll still be in the 20s at 10. By noon, we'll be above freezing freezing and in the afternoon it's going to be cold but temperatures will be getting into the 40s so that's some good news there uh, you won't be seeing a freeze especially for those in uh, northern bear county up into the hill country temperatures have been below freezing for quite some time there we will be above freezing this afternoon but don't let your guard down because as early as eight o'clock tonight we expect us to see another freeze and by tomorrow morning a hard freeze is likely across uh, all of south central Texas. Texas, but the high temperatures today will be right near 40 degrees all across South Central Texas. Here's what those morning lows look like though. Tomorrow morning, Christmas morning, 19 degrees in Kerrville, 22 in Hondo, 23 in Del Rio, 20 in Canyon Lake, 24 in Pleasanton, closer view around San Antonio, 22 in Castroville and Seguin, 19 in Bernie Bulverde and Lotus and 19 in Comfort. So keep those pipes wrapped. What was it you said, Jonathan? You can unwrap your presents, but don't unwrap your pipes. I That's like right. that. That was a really <laughs> good one. Okay, now our tomorrow morning again, 22 for the morning low. That would be the second coldest Christmas morning on record for San Antonio. Records go back to 1885, but it is going to get above freezing tomorrow. 44 at noon, 50 for the high temperature tomorrow for Christmas. Just a very cold start. Sunrise at 726 for any of those sunrise Christmas services or masses. As we look ahead to the rest of the week, though, know that we expect another hard freeze Monday morning and a freeze, a light freeze Tuesday morning. And then we get into the 70s by Wednesday and Thursday. More on the national weather and travel in the next half hour of GMSA. Thank you, Sarah. And you're also tracking Santa. I am. That's right. He's where, just... where was he last? In Japan last. Okay. So coming up in the next half hour, I'll show you where he's at. Grab he's the kids. Traveling fast. They want to see. Traveling fast. Over yeah. a billion gifts he's delivered so far? So far. Okay. You go, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, time is 8.15, 20 degrees, and still ahead with all of the holiday parties you might be attending, there's now a scarf with a secret compartment. Gotta love a secret compartment. And we'll give you a hint on what it involves. Snacking. We want to turn now to some late-breaking news. There's a fire on the northeast side of town. This happening in the 3900 block of Barrington Street. That's just outside of Loop 410 near Starcrest. That's where we find our Camellia Wattis. Camellia, what can you tell us? Jonathan, Sarah, right now we've just got here and there's been over two dozen um, fire trucks that we've seen out here. Um, but first I want to give you a look at the fire right now. It looks like just in that corner, we saw it about just a couple minutes ago, there was a bunch of smoke coming out. But in the last five or ten minutes, I can tell that, it, I mean, the smoke is, the smoke is no longer there. Like I said, there's over two dozen fire trucks responding out here. Um, they're using the fire hydrants. They're, you know, you can see some of the water on the floor. Um, there's lots of fire crews out here. So far, we've also seen um, Fire Chief Hood out here. He made an appearance as soon as he pulled up. We um, we spoke with him. We asked if he had inf any information, and he said that he did not. Um, but for now, it looks like a lot of them. The firefighters are starting starting to leave. But for now, um, right now, we don't have much information at this time, but we are working to get that information. For now, I'll send it right back to y'all in the studio. Jonathan, Sarah. Camelia, thank you. And hopefully we can hear from Chief Hood to figure out if residents are displaced at this time. A tough time to be out of your home Absolutely. on Christmas Eve. And Absolutely. we'll also find out if the Red Cross would be working with those residents. Thank yeah. you, Camelia.
Both time is 820, temperatures 21 degrees. Next, serving up any holiday drinks this weekend? What about some mojitos yes, or please. some Cosmos in a can? Yes to everything. <laughs> we'll tell you how they taste and which ones taste the best. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Well, it's the season for holiday parties. Surely there's going to be a number of parties tonight and cocktails uh, are going to be ready uh, and available for everyone from Cosmos to mojitos from uh, just drinks in a can. But how do they taste and how would you want them to, how would you like to serve those to your guests? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has your holiday help. If your party calls for cocktails, Here's a time saver cocktail in a can. One of the better things about canned cocktails is that they allow you to focus on your guests and not on preparing your cocktails yourself. So how does canning something that's meant to be served fresh from the bar really taste? A lot of cocktails work really well in cans, but one thing you have to look out for is that it's very hard to can fresh citrus juice or fresh fruit juice. They're gonna be their own thing. For example, Tester said this Bacardi Mojito doesn't exactly taste like a mojito, but it was still a surprise hit, tasting like spiked Sprite. If that's too sweet, Taster said this Cutwater Tequila Paloma is also refreshing, slightly citrusy and reasonably priced, making it a good party pick. If you want to play bartender and save money, you'll need a cocktail shaker. Beginners gravitate toward the cobbler style. It has three parts, a shaker, a strainer, and a cap that doubles as a one-ounce measuring cup. Pros prefer Boston-style shakers, just two parts. This stainless steel one from Crate & Barrel is easy to use, dishwasher safe, and costs 20 bucks. You'll need to buy a Hawthorne strainer separately. Cheers! Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Can you show me your cocktail shake, Jonathan? Yeah, you got to perfect the shake. <laughs> I've seen how they do it. I think that, that oh. makes it taste better. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> your bartender for the holidays. So if you are at a holiday party with delicious appetizers and desserts, and you would love to take a few, but you still want to look fashionable while doing so, we have your option. That's right. But if you don't know uh, what would be appropriate or not, well, this new invention might be the answer to your snack cravings and fashion sense all in one. Hefty has just unveiled the snack scarf. The household products maker calls this the perfect way to keep you warm and also secretly fill your scarf with your favorite party foods to take home. The company says the key is using the scarf's hidden storage back pockets to keep those appetizers fresh. Now the plaid design snack scarf comes in two sizes quart and gallon and it's a gallon. limited edition Woof. <laughs> <laughs> options hefty says the scarf retails for less than three dollars each okay if you're having if you have a gallon you're not just snacking you're having no, a that's, meal that's a full meal that's a full meal that's a full meal we'll have to check sarah spivey's scarf and see if she has <laughs> a secret you, compartment she's got a snack scarf on guys <laughs> Okay, it's is it the gallon one? <laughs> it's the gallon. All right, it's 826 and 21 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 830 on Saturday. It's Christmas Eve. We're all excited for it. Know, We're it's definitely the Christmas spirit it's here. It's cold outside, but the most exciting man of the day, of the night, is... Not Sarah Spivey, I'm sorry. It is Santa Claus. Sarah Spivey. Santa Spivey. Claus, that's right. Yeah. And you're tracking him. I am tracking Santa Claus. That's exactly right. We are tracking him all day with the help of NORAD. Let's take a look at where Santa is right now. He's over in China. And so far, he's delivered 1.2 billion presents. He is working hard to deliver those presents. And you know what? Santa's going to be right at home when he comes to San Antonio because it's cold. <laughs> it feels like the North Pole out there. It's 20 degrees in San Antonio at the moment. Uh, 17 in Bulverde, 19 in Bernie, 13 in Comfort, 19 Port SA area, 20 in Seguin, 18 in Hondo, and it's 17 degrees in Yavaldi right now. Now, as we look at the day today, we do anticipate temperatures rising pretty quickly under sunny skies. So much so that by noon, we will be above freezing 
all of us around South Central Texas will be above freezing today. In San Antonio, we're forecasting 41, but those across the hill country that still remained below freezing all day yesterday, you're going to see some relief this afternoon as temperatures top off near 40 degrees. Northeast winds today at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun's going to set at 541, and by 9 p.m., we're already going to be freezing again. So here's some things we're going to talk about in the forecast in a bit. Again, above freezing by lunch, I'll show you neighborhood high temperatures. Christmas morning, we start off with another hard freeze, so still keep those freeze precautions in place because tomorrow morning we expect a hard freeze, but it will be sunny and near 50 degrees for Christmas Day. And because it's Texas this week, by Wednesday, we'll be at 70. We'll talk about that temperature forecast coming up in just a bit. Jonathan, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, in Ohio, 50 cars were involved in crashes due to strong winds and blowing snow. This happened yesterday on the Ohio Turnpike. State Highway Patrol say at least one person was killed and as many as 50 vehicles were involved in accidents in Erie County. Now, several people were injured. Buses were used to take people from the crash site to a warming shelter. A suspect who illegally tried to enter an Air Force base in South Carolina was shot by security personnel. According to a statement Friday afternoon, a Shaw Air Force base airman wounded a gate runner around 1.30 in the afternoon. The injured suspect was sent to a nearby medical facility for treatment. It's still not clear why the individual was trying to gain access to the air base. Local and federal authorities are conducting a joint investigation into this incident. Thousands of air travelers are facing a travel nightmare this holiday weekend. More than 5,000 flights have been canceled, with the majority in Seattle, Chicago, O'Hare, New York, LaGuardia, Denver, and Detroit. At airports in Cleveland and Grand Rapids, more than 70% of the flights have been canceled. On top of the cancellations, flight tracking site flight, uh, FlightAware is showing nearly 8,000 delayed flights. Now we want to turn now to some late breaking news. There's a fire on the northeast side of town. We know fire crews are still working to put that fire out. This is happening at an apartment complex in the 3900 block of Barrington. This is just outside of Loop 410 near Starcrest. That's where we find our Camellia Wattis, who is live. Camellia, have you learned any information at this time? Jonathan, Sarah, that's right. So we just spoke uh, to fire fire people firefighters about this and they told me I'll just give you a look so right now this is the apartment complex and they told me that right now the fire is out they've taken it out I can see firefighters starting to roll back the roll back the, the tubes that they pump the water through they're starting to leave um, but they did tell us that this fire came they got the call for the fire around seven o'clock this morning and um, they have certain crews that are trying to look for people who live here look for people who may have been displaced and they told me that they have not seen any residents come to them or approach them they said they are still looking for people but i mean it's been about an hour and they have not had any residents quite yet i was also told that um chief hood comes out here on a second they're called second fire alarms. And so that just means it's a higher level of response. And so he typically comes out with that level of response. So that does mean that there was a big uh, fire response out right now. It, the fire affected the first and second floor. Um, again, at this time, we don't know um, if anyone's been displaced, if anyone was living there. Um, but for now, the fire is out. Firefighters are wrapping up and I'll send it back to you in the studio. Jonathan, Sarah. Camelia, thank you. Hopefully we'll get some more information on that throughout this morning. All right, switching up gears with so many video games released this year, it isn't hard to have missed out on a fun gaming experience. That's right. Rick Demigella looks at some of the buried treasure video games of 2022. Twenty twenty two was packed with new video games, some of which may have been overlooked by players. Victor Lucas, creator of the Electric Playground, says these titles are worth checking out. 
Well, there's definitely some awesome smaller size games or indie size video games. One of them that did get a lot of acclaim, which I think is worth the highlight, is Tunic, which was made by a single developer out of Canada. It's got a lot of great mystery and a lot of great visual style to it, beautiful music as well. And it's also a lot more challenging than it looks. It looks incredibly cute, but it's really tough. In the year 2030, a new blood sport grips the globe. One that I think a lot of people have stopped talking about. It got a little bit of attention when it launched is a game called Roller Drome. But I just thought it was a really fantastic stylistic concoction and it was incredibly addictive because, you know, it combined the sort of Tony Hawk hooks with a really solid shooter mechanic. I was very impressed by Roller Drome. Sifu is a fighting experience, and we've had lots of great fighting games in video game history, but this one plays a little bit different. It's almost like something out of a John Wick movie, where your character has to go into nightclubs and down corridors and into boss lairs and get surrounded by all kinds of enemies. It's just so stylish and so fun and so tuned. Come on, Naka. Pull to the Lamb was a smaller indie title as well, where it's you're actually building a little cult. <laughs> There's cutesy little characters, almost like something you know analogous to the Animal Crossing vibe. It's charming and clever and really cute in terms of its visual style. Uh, but there's a lot of depth in Cult of the Lamb as well. It's an incredibly addictive experience. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. All right, time is 8.37, 21 degrees. Bernie City workers are seeing success in a new plan they have to make sure shelter animals are being seen and more importantly, getting adopted. What that plan is and how successful it has been since the start. And taking a look outside with live cam, the sun is making its way out. Hopefully those temperatures will get nice and toasty into the afternoon. We'll check with Sarah Spivey. Bernie City workers are celebrating this morning as their plan to get more eyes on shelter animals in need of home is working. Their initial goal of having two cats adopted has surpassed seven cats have been adopted from the Bernie Library. Since September, Patty Santos tells us who else is helping the shelter's numbers stay low. Willa sits at the Bernie Library waiting to be noticed. This, this one in particular is very affectionate, like the most affectionate cat I've ever known. She's part of a new program by city staff trying to get shelter animals more visibility and increase their chances of finding a home. We have about anywhere from 460 to 500 people a day in the building. So it was an opportunity for us to really be able to advertise these animals and get them adopted. The partnership between the Bernie Animal Care Services and city departments is a success. At City Hall, dogs like Rufus are finding new families with those paying their utility bills. Utilities customer service finance have 11 dogs so far. The library, I believe, has seven, and even the police department have three so far. So I call that a win-win for everyone. The cats hang out in the library office. Librarians help talk them up and look after them. It even helps relieve office stress. I think everybody should have an office pet. I really do. The new program helps keep shelter numbers low in a time when pet surrenders are high. This year, this last fiscal year, we took in 685 animals. That's over a 35% increase from the year before. Hopefully, by the time Willa makes her TV debut, she's in a new home. What I've learned, I think what I would say what I've learned is that it's so much easier than you you think it could be to do a program like this. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. No, no. Super cute cat. And you know, as the temperatures drop and we're experiencing this cold weather, it's important to know, bring your pets inside. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Take care of them, keep them or warm. Or also, um, if you have to walk them or take them outside, maybe put a sweater on them if you have one. And they may not like it, but they're going to like it when they're outside. Right. My dog, Especially the smaller dogs. Oh, I know. When I see them and they're bundled up. It's Those little chihuahuas. <laughs> so cute. Their sweater is so keep cute. Keep them warm. Oh my goodness. But you know what? It is cold out there right now with temperatures in the teens and 20s. And even though we're going to see sun today, keep in mind that we're expecting another hard freeze tomorrow morning. So great advice there, Jonathan. Keep those pets inside. 
for a while here as we deal with the coldest air we've seen so far this season. It's 18 in Kerrville, 18 in Hondo, 23 in Del Rio, 21 in Catula, 24 in Gonzalez, and 22 in LaGrange. A neighborhood view around San Antonio. Man, it's 13 in Comfort. Opposite of Comfortable right now in Comfort. 18 in Bulverde, 20 in New Braunfels, 19 Port SA, 18 in Hondo, and 24 in Gonzalez. Now, one thing we have working in our favor is that winds are not as strong as they were yesterday. Yesterday, we were dealing with single digit wind chills, even below zero wind chills up in the hill country. Now temperatures just feel a couple of degrees uh, cooler than what the thermometer actually reads. This is a thing that's going to affect you all day though, how dry it is outside. These are not temperatures, these are dew points. So low that they're beyond our scale right here. Very low dew points. Not only will you need some extra chapstick, but it could be shocking out there. Static shock forecast for you at the top of the meter uh, because, uh, you know, I, I was vacuuming the other day, yesterday, and the vacuum shocked me. That's how dry it was out there. So keep that in mind. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, temperatures are going to stay cold today, but we are going to get above freezing. By noon, we'll be above freezing in San Antonio. A little bit after that, it'll be above freezing in the hill country. Today, we'll be looking at a forecast high of 40 degrees, totally sunny. It's actually going to be a welcome sight to be seeing temperatures in the 40s today, but as early as 8 p.m. we could see a freeze again. So please don't let your guard down when it comes to the freeze. We do expect high temperature of 41 in Kerrville and in Canyon Lake. That's nice for the hill country because parts of the hill country did not get above freezing yesterday. It'll be 41 in Del Rio, 41 in Catula, and generally a high temperature right around 40 uh, across San Antonio and the uh, suburbs of San Antonio. But by tomorrow morning, 19 in Kerrville, 20 in Canyon Lake, 21 in Uvalde, 22 in Gonzales, and 24 in Pleasanton. In spite of the very cold start tomorrow, hard freeze expected, we are going to see a warmer afternoon tomorrow. 50 degrees for the high temperature on Christmas Day, but you're going to need that jacket with you throughout the day, especially in the morning if you're heading out to Christmas services. Northwest winds tomorrow at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Let's talk about the weather setup. Across Texas, no problems traveling. There is a little bit of flurry activity south of Dallas, but that's not causing any issues on the roads. So if you're heading out, roads look great across the state of Texas. It's a different story for the northern tier of the United States. You know, parts of Kentucky have ice on them on the roads. The Carolinas are dealing with the power outages right now from this winter storm that is pushing through parts of the Great Lakes. As far as uh, travel problems go across the United States today, that'll mainly be across the Great Lakes, Toronto, Cleveland, Detroit. Those areas are going to have uh, blizzard like conditions at times. Now uh, around Christmas Day itself, it should be a little quieter, but the northern tier could still be dealing with some snow. Then by Monday, most of the travel issues will be across the Midwest. Keep in mind if you have uh, plans to fly out on Monday, you may run into some delays because of that. But around Texas, again, it's not going to be an issue. If you're driving around Texas, we're going to be seeing nothing but sunshine over the next few days. Take a look at the forecast here. Again, a Freezing start tomorrow, freezing start on Monday morning, and even on Tuesday morning, a light freeze is possible. But the key here is that we're going to be back to the 70s by Wednesday. That is Texas weather for you. And I've been checking in with Santa Claus. I've got the Santa tracker. I'll show you that in the next half hour. You really got the connect with Santa. I do. <laughs> okay, yeah, guy, we're pretty. Are tight. we on the good list? Uh, naughty nice. Okay, that's Done what I it. thought. I like that. Jonathan's nice. <laughs> Those were reindeer um, antlers, not horns, by the oh, way. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All you. right, it's 848 and 22 degrees. And next, instead of just throwing away your Christmas tree this year, why not recycle it? We'll tell you where you can do so and what you can get in return. Now, a lot of people will be traveling today. Jonathan and I will be hitting the roads after right. the show. Uh, I did see a fire engine on the roads at some point. It looks like it has cleared. If any incidents uh, pop up, we will let you know about them. But first, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. All right, pick three. Those lucky numbers are two, two, three, and nine. Daily four, those numbers are one, eight, five, zero, seven. Fireball seven. Cash five, two, four, 13, 14, 28. And Mega Millions, 15, 21, 32, 38, 62, Mega Ball 8, Mega Player 4. Good luck. 
If you're wondering what to do with your Christmas tree after the holidays, you can now recycle it in exchange for mulch this year. Yeah, the City of San Antonio Solid Waste Management is hosting four centers throughout the new year for customers to recycle their Christmas trees. Only live trees, of course, are exchangeable. No garlands or wreaths. The tree has to be free of any decorations and you must cut the tree in half if it's taller than six feet. So we have a full list of centers where and where they're located. Just head to our website, ksat.com. All right, time is 8.52, 23 degrees. We'll be right back. Before we go, we want to remind you, if you lose power or need a place to escape the cold weather, there are seven warming centers open across the city and county. If you need transportation to one of those centers, VIA is offering free rides to anyone. Just remember to bring your own medications, clothes, and supplies. The City of Bernie also has a warming center that will be open until Monday. It's at the Patrick Heath Public Library. We have all that information right now on KSAT.com. CPS Energy offering its customers some suggestions to help keep their next bill manageable. For those who can't, keep the thermostat at 68 degrees, but they stress do not turn off your heat so your pipes don't freeze. If you have ceiling fans, make sure the blades are going in a clockwise pattern to push heat down into the room. And for those who, uh, who can have an electric vehicle, charge them up during the day to avoid overnight high demand period. And for more money and energy saving tips, you can visit cpsenergy.com backslash tips. All right, hope everyone stays warm. Well, we still have an hour left of GMSA. It's 8.55 and 23 degrees. We'll be right back.